Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to look up to you. <laughs> and I'd like to start out, as many of the members have this week, is to give recognition to the veterans uh, in my city, in particular in Edmonton Strathcona. Um, I'll be joining uh, many at uh, Holy Trinity Anglican Church in my riding with the Light Horse Regiment, where we'll have a service and march to the Cenotaph. And I look forward to joining Edmontonians in thanking our veterans for their service and remembering those who did not come home. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise also to speak to the reforms proposed in Bill C-26. The pension reforms are a welcome response to the growing pension crisis in Canada. Contrary to what some of the members in the House uh, allege, people are not able to save and we are in a crisis. We need to support those who move to retirement. My colleagues and I have been calling for these reforms for a considerable amount of time, as have many unions, as have uh, provincial governments and seniors organizations, including CARP. While better was possible and the full benefit will not be felt for five decades, the proposed benefit enhancements are a good first step. Challenges will remain for those currently retired or approaching the age of retirement. Today's seniors will not personally benefit from these changes, but as Wade Poziamoza, CARP Director for Policy, has explained, and in quotes, CPP enhancement is important to CARP's membership because they recognize the challenges that young people face today when it comes to savings. With less access to workplace pension plans, a CPP that meets the needs of Canadians today is so crucial, end of quotes. The federal and provincial governments are to be commended for having reached the agreement that led to this bill. I'm pleased that the government of Alberta was among the first to support this critical step forward, contrary to the case with previous governments of our province. As has been pointed out by previous speakers on the bill, fewer and fewer Canadians are being provided access to workplace pension plans. And where pension plans are provided, they are in many instances offering reduced retirement security. Additionally, with younger workers increasingly likely to change their jobs many times over their lifetime, and with many indeed, as my colleague from Churchill, Kuwaitanuk Aski, has pointed out in this place, facing precarious work. The need for secure and adequate public pensions is becoming increasingly important. Only about a third of those eligible to do so actually contribute to RRSPs. It's clear that Canadians need support in saving for retirement. And this is not because they are profligate or irresponsible. Young families have to prioritize paying for rent or, if fortunate, a mortgage, paying down substantial and growing student debt, and simply putting food on the table. And later in life, they may be faced with helping cover significant and growing education costs for their children and retirement needs of their own parents. The Canada Pension Plan has proved to be a reliable and safe way to save for retirement. Why would we not use it as a mechanism to ensure retirement with dignity for future generations? Concerns have been raised by some about the additional costs to employees and employers of incre increased contributions to CPP. But the concerns about costs to small business, um, with the cost to small business, we're still awaiting the promise, the long promise, frankly, by both the Conservatives and Liberals, of reduced taxes to small business. The economy has taken a hit recently, particularly in my own province, yet the contribution of seniors to the economy remains essential to all our communities, in particular to small and medium-sized independent businesses, of which my own riding of Edmonton Strathcona has so many. We need future retirees to be sufficiently economically secure to ensure economic health in the future. The most cost-effective way to do that is enhance CPP and QPP. CARP has been among those who have pointed out that the proposals in C26 only go part way towards a full solution of the problems we face in ensuring retirement dignity for all Canadians. It's estimated that we need about 70% of our income at retirement to maintain our standard of living. Currently, CPP and OAS together bring us to about 40% of that. The changes in C26 increase that only to 50% meaning Canadians will still need to have some kind of workplace or private pension plan to stay ahead or ability to save. According to a recent Stats Canada report, currently about 12 percent or 600,000 seniors in Canada live in poverty. This includes more than one in four seniors, most of whom are women. 
In my constituency office, we hear from many facing the challenges of insufficient income to pay for the basics of life. This is especially true for those reliant solely on OAS and GIS. Many of those eligible for those benefits are not accessing it because they're either unaware of those benefits or they don't know how to apply. The question I wish to put the, to the government is this. Why should seniors have to apply for these payments? Why not issue them automatically to those in need, yeah. as is the case with GST credits? Yeah. We're also discovering that while checking on applications for constituents, that the processing times for OAS and GIS have exploded. It's now six to eight months, whether or not you applied before you turned 65 or after. In some cases, they wait a year. In the meantime, the applicants are relying on nothing at all, bare cupboards. It's important to recognize few seniors are actually receiving the maximum CPP benefits, meager as they are. If they have some RSPs and decide to cash them in to get by while waiting for OAS or GIS to kick in, they may be penalized the following year by having the GIS clawed back. We need to end this GIS clawback. Among the reasons our offices hear from so many seniors is that it's almost impossible for them to contact a government department employee to discuss their issues. While it may be efficient to have everything online, it doesn't suit everyone or every situation. Even at Service Canada offices, it's difficult for people to find someone who has access to the files. It's pitiful that seniors can't call and talk to a real person over the phone about their pensions. Mr. Speaker, we've waited a long time for the reforms contained in C-26. Let's make sure we take this important step towards ensuring retirement security for the people we represent. Let it not be the last time we look at the issue of pensions or support for seniors in this place. It's time to ensure greater availability of affordable senior housing and care, including home care, palliative care and pharmacare. Canadian seniors should not live in poverty. It's our responsibility to make sure they don't. Here, here. Well, questions and comments, Honorable Deputy de... The Honourable Member for Laurentide Labelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I very much appreciate the Member for Edmonton touched on his speech. It's a very good speech. And the NDP is always very good at bringing forward interesting ideas, and I like hearing about them. But I know that the Liberals have come with a good balance when the Conservatives say we have gone way too far, and the NDP say we are not going far enough. I think it's the perfect happy medium yet again. So the member would like to comment on that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, simply astounding. Yeah, really. I'm sorry, when it comes to Canadian seniors, a happy medium just isn't good enough. Yeah, yeah. Every senior should have the right to retire in dignity. Yes. All we're saying is, yes, we appreciate a little bit of increase in CPP. But let's take these actions we're recommending on making GIS and OAS readily available, and let's finally act on palliative care, home care, and retiring dignity. Yes. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Peace River, Westlock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the, my colleague for her speech on the topic here. One of the things she mentioned right off the top was that young people today are not able to save. And so my question to her would be, um, they're not able to save because they, in some cases, don't have a job or they, they're not making enough money. So my question to her is, why does she think that it's, we should be taking more money from them when they're not able to save, rather than working to make sure that the economy is flourishing so that, as she well knows, in a, like a hot economy in Alberta, we typically make much more than the rest of the country. If we can get the economy rolling again, uh, would, would the ability to save come back? Thank you. Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my uh, colleague for his question. Mr. Speaker, it's not just the young people that would be contributing to a better CP at their time of retirement. We're all going to be contributing. I'm happy to contribute more so that my niece can retire in dignity at her time. It'll be, you know, the, the deductions are proportional to what you're earning. Frankly, we need greater action so that not just young people, but so many in my province and across the country are relying on precarious work. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Couch and Malahat Langford. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for her wonderful speech. Uh, you know, we have long advocated for uh, increases to the GIS in the NDP, and, and while we were thankful to see that 10% increase recently, there's still much more that needs to be done. Um, we all know that the GIS uh, depends on tax revenues, but some of the arguments I hear from the Conservatives are that they want to increase 
the TFSA, which is going to have an impact on future revenues upon which the GIS depends. So we're going to increase the guaranteed income supplement but take away the revenues it depends on. I'd just like to hear her comments on that inconsistent argument. For Edmonton Strathcona. Uh, I'd like to thank my colleague for his intelligent question. I think it answers itself. Uh, first of all, very few Canadians can actually contribute to a tax-free savings account. Uh, those of us who are well-paid, we're fortunate that we can contribute. I'm pleased that the government is limiting those contributions so that, in fact, there are more dollars available so that we can provide support to those who can't afford to contribute so that they, too, can retire in dignity. Here, here. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we very much appreciate the fact that the New Democrats are supporting the, at least some aspects of the budget in regards to the increase to the GIS. I think it's also important that we acknowledge that the Liberal government is also reducing the age of retirement from 67 to 65. We have three foundational, what I would argue, public foundational uh, pension programs, all three of them have been dealt with in a very positive way uh, in, the, in the last uh, 12 months by this government. And I'm wondering if the member might want to uh, comment on terms of just how important it is that Canadians recognize uh, that in fact there has been significant movement in this last year, more so than there was in the previous 10 years, on three very important social programs that Canadians truly love. Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. <laughs> my apologies, Mr. Speaker. I thought my questions were over. Um, but I will give a response. I want to congratulate uh, the member and his party for bringing forward these changes. Um, but I would like to see far more changes. And we know that we've had a lot of, of promises about additional changes coming forward, possibly after the next election. Um, we welcome this change, but please take action on the additional changes that we've been calling and seniors have been calling for quite some time. Thank nice you. Save. Nice.